Today on Beers TV, we're going to talk about the only proven additive out there that doses both calcium and alkalinity in a single product and helps maintain a higher pH at the same time. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beerus TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week we're going to cover calcium hydroxide, often referred to as Kelkwasser. We'll cover why it's so popular, how it works, a couple of the most common installs, coupled with some information on how to protect your tank from overdoses. There are a couple of tank safety issues associated with Kelkwasser that we'll get into later, and they're fairly easy to avoid. But I'm going to go ahead and say right now that Kelkwasser is likely the easiest possible method of maintaining calcium, alkalinity, and pH out there. It has basically no effect on salinity, and a lot of reefers are going to find a ton of success using it. The reason I say that is it's capable of maintaining all of these things with a single inexpensive product and it's pretty easy to understand. It's cheaper and easier to dose than two-part in many cases and way cheaper and way easier than a calcium reactor. Only issue is it isn't as scalable because the Kelkwasser powder needs to be dissolved in a large volume of water, which means you're somewhat limited to how much you can add in a single day by how much your tank evaporates in that day. You obviously can't add more water to the tank that evaporates or eventually the tank is going to overflow. In most cases, you can add enough of the Kelkwasser solution in a day to satisfy the demand of any LPS tank, most mixed reef tanks, and even some SPS tanks. So this is how it works. Coralline algae and coral skeleton structures made up of a substance known as calcium carbonate. Corals pull calcium and carbonate ions out of the water to build this structure. If we want them to grow, stay healthy, and maintain coloration, we need to replenish the calcium and carbonate the corals remove. Kalkwasser is capable of replenishing both those elements with one solution. Kalkwasser is just a calcium hydroxide powder which you dissolve in water. When the calcium hydroxide is dissolved in a purified fresh water, it will ionize or separate into calcium and hydroxide ions. The calcium will obviously provide calcium to the tank. The alkalinity or carbonate is provided by the hydroxide. When the hydroxide enters the tank, it will react with the carbon dioxide in the aquarium's water to create carbonate and bicarbonate. Net result is dosing Kelkwasser to the tank will help replace both calcium and carbonate alkalinity. One nice side effect of the whole process is it effectively reduces carbon dioxide in the tank, which raises the pH in the tank. Most reefers are going to find that beneficial because they believe corals calcify and grow faster at pHs closer to 8.3, which can be hard to maintain consistently without additives like Kelkwasser. So what's the best way to add Kelkwasser to the tank? There are a variety of different methods, but they all share one thing in common. They add the Kelkwasser solution to the tank very slowly. By slowly, I mean over the course of many hours or even the entire day, typically with a slow drip or short and frequent spurts. The reason I say slowly is because Kelkwasser raises the pH of the tank significantly, so you can only add very small amounts in a single dose. I think the most common and easiest long-term solution is just mix Kelkwasser into the freshwater holding container for your auto top-off, which we'll explain in detail. And second is an inexpensive dripper, which is a bit more manual but cheap and achieves the same goals. So we're going to start with what I think is the best solution for dosing Kelkwasser, which is in conjunction with an auto top-off. This is ideal for a newer reefer or mid-level reefers looking for a super easy way to maintain calcium alkalinity pH and at the same time solve your tank's evaporation needs, all of which are the foundation of stable parameters in a healthy growing reef tank. For those of you that don't know, an auto top-off is just a system that uses a float, optical, or other sensors to monitor the water level. When water evaporates, the sensor turns on a pump in a freshwater storage container. Once it's replaced the evaporated water, the sensor is triggered and it turns off the pump. Pretty simple. All we need to do is add some Kelkwasser powder to this freshwater storage tank. For this example, we're going to use a five-gallon bucket as our freshwater storage container. Two teaspoons is the maximum amount of Kelkwasser which can be dissolved in a gallon of water. So the maximum we can add is 10 teaspoons to this five gallon bucket. How much calc you add is going to be a combination of how much water your tank evaporates in a day and how many corals are in your tank. If your tank evaporates very little water, you might want to make the solution more potent with the full two teaspoons per gallon of fresh water. If you evaporate multiple gallons a day, you might want to try half a teaspoon and work your way up. So let's assume your tank evaporates an average amount of water for your tank size and focus on what's actually in the tank. If you have just a few LPS corals, I'd start with a less potent mix of just a half a teaspoon per gallon of fresh water. So that'd be two and a half total teaspoons for this five gallon container. If you have a medium stock tank, I'd start with one teaspoon per gallon. On a fully stocked tank with many corals, including SPS, I'd mix in the full two teaspoons, so 10 total with this five gallon fresh water bucket. 
After you mix it, the water will turn a milky white, which is often referred to as a kelk slurry. We don't want to dose the kelk slurry directly to the tank because it's much too potent. Let it settle out for a few hours and the water will start to become clear again with some white sediment at the bottom of the container. This is a mix of undissolved calc and some precipitates. We don't want to dose these to the tank, so either suspend your top off pump a few inches off the bottom of your freshwater container, or place your pump inside something small to prevent it from sucking water off the bottom couple inches, which contain the precipitate. I use the glass container from a small OXO flip lock, but you could use basically anything. What's really nice about this solution is the very nature of evaporation is really slow and happens all day long, which is the exact way we want to dose Kalkwasser, which is very slow and consistent to prevent pH spikes. My suggestion for auto top-offs are the JBJ if you're on a budget, and the Tunes Osmolator if you're looking for something that utilizes multiple sensor types, robust safety features, and comes with a pump. The Tunes Osmolator is my choice, and I personally never had one fail on me in the on position, which is the most important factor. Out of the box, it doses faster than you might want to dose calc, but you can take it apart and turn the pump speed down if required. You should note that calc washers harden all pumps, so you'll have to replace them a bit more frequently. The one issue that you need to take very seriously is like anything else on the tank, an auto top off can fail in the on position, which has the chance of dumping a pretty large volume of calc into your tank, which can range from bad to devastating. This is a big concern with auto top offs that rely on moving parts like float switches. Even though the optical eye and the Tunes Osmolator has never failed me, it is possible, so you should implement a backup plan for even the best auto top off if you're going to use calc washer in a freshwater storage bin. Here's a quick rundown of some safety ideas. One of the best is to use a standalone pH controller or an aquarium controller to shut off power to your ATO if the pH ever gets, say, above 8.5. Most auto top offs have an internal safety timer which tells them to turn off if the pump's been on too long. So you can pair that with a slower pump like a dosing pump or aqua lifter which limits the amount added. You can also use an external timer to limit the ATO as well. Couple other options, you could use a float valve on your sump which will manually shut off the water supply to your tank. You can also rig up a leak detector like the standalone model or even a leak detector module for your controller like the ALD for the Neptune Apex. I'd implement at least one of these ideas for sure, but even better, a combination of these ideas will help you protect your tank and help avoid all the most common issues associated with auto top offs and kelk washer overdoses. Next we're going to explain the simple drippers. You can build one out of basically any container and really only need some tube and a valve of some sort. Reefkeeping Magazine has some instructions for one of the simplest versions out there. For those of you that prefer their DIY kits to come in a kit form, we have a kit that has almost everything you need to create a slightly more polished version other than the container itself. We also have a quick video that shows you exactly how to assemble one if you're interested. The glass container we use in the video is called an OXO flip lock and also on the site but you could use basically any reef safe container. To use a dripper like this we fill it with purified fresh water, add some Kelkwasser powder and stir. The powder will saturate the water with calcium and hydroxide ions. After, let the solution rest for a couple hours. Again, some precipitate or undissolved calc will settle out on the bottom of the container. Notice how the feed straw for your dripper doesn't go all the way to the bottom. This will make sure that we only dose the clear solution and not suck up the undissolved calc and precipitate off the bottom of the container. Once it's settled out, all you need to do is start the siphon and drip the solution to your tank or sump. Remember, slow addition is the key. Might be a good idea to have two of these containers around, so when you start the one dripping for today, you can mix tomorrow's and it'll be fully settled for the next day. Regardless if you use an ATO or dripper, start by testing calcium and alkalinity every day or so in the beginning to make sure you have the right potency and the tank is on track. I'd also suggest picking up a pH test kit and testing before and after dosing so you get an idea of the effect calc has on the pH. If it's in your budget, that monitor like the pinpoint or a controller like a reef keeper or apex is even better. One note on starting the use of calc washer on your tank, calc is great for maintaining already good parameters like calcium at 420. The slow daily additions will prevent the levels from dropping. It however isn't a great way to try to make larger adjustments like if your calcium was at 360 and you want to get it back up to 420 because the pH swing would be way too high if you added that much calc washer. In this case I would use calcium chloride to boost the calcium levels, sodium bicarbonate to adjust the alkalinity, and then use the calc washer to maintain these new levels. Couple last things on dosing Kelkwasser. Once it's mixed, do not mix it again. 
we want to limit the amount of carbon dioxide the calc solution interacts with because carbon dioxide depletes the strength of the solution. So never mix the calc after initial stirring. And for the same reason, make sure to put a tight fitting lid on your storage containers. Also pay attention to common sense rules to siphoning. Make sure the tube used to dose the calc to your tank or sump is located above the storage container to prevent siphons. If you do place the storage tank above where the calc enters the tank, it will absolutely create a siphon and empty the entire storage container into the tank, which is bad. Calcium hydroxide is also very caustic and not good for your skin, eyes, mouth, or body. So read the safety information provided on the manufacturer's packaging. It will irritate your skin, isn't good to breathe, and I've never got it in my eyes, but I'd expect it to hurt like hell. There are also reactors out there called calc reactors. They work by pumping fresh water through a slurry of calc. The benefit is mostly tied to maintaining the most potent calc washer solution, reduce interaction with the calc powder, and everyone loves more gadgets. I wouldn't say they're super common, but more advanced reefers that have the space and budget use them fairly frequently. We'll see you next week with another episode of BRS TV. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. If you can't wait, check out that video on how to build your own calc drip how to dose two-part or this one on calcium reactors. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.